Okay, in section 1.4, we're going to cover writing equations and inequalities. Now, we just finished a section called writing expressions, and, I, and there's a simple difference between writing an equation and an inequality versus an expression, and sometimes I think it's so simple we kind of overlook the importance of it. So let's start there. What's the difference between writing an equation versus just writing an expression like we did in section 1.3? Well, the major difference is when you write an equation or an inequality, it's basically the same thing we did in the last section, writing an expression, except, and maybe I should underline that, except these equations we write will have an equal sign or an inequality included in it. Okay, I guess the best way for me to verbalize this would be, in the last section, you might have wrote down for a problem something like x plus 8. That's an expression, x plus 8. Or maybe you had 2x minus 4. That's an expression. But if we have x plus 8 equals 10, now it became an equation. We have an equal sign in it. Or if you had 2x minus 4 is less than 12, that is now an inequality versus an expression. So that's the major difference between an inequality and an equation versus an expression. Equations have to have an equal sign in it, making both expressions the same. Uh, maybe I can write a little example over here in blue. And like I just said, maybe something as basic as x plus 8. Now that in and of itself is an expression. But if I put an equal sign in here and I call that 12, that means if this is 12, what's over here must also be 12. Okay, very simple idea. But because I have an equal sign, it's no longer an expression. It's now an equation. Okay? If you have an inequality, an inequality has to have one of the following symbols. And actually, I think you are familiar with all these different symbols. Let me get this out of the way. Um, a not equal sign. That means not equal. Inequality means we have two things that aren't necessarily equal or the greater than symbol, less than symbol, is greater than or equal to, or is less than or equal to, um, and again, not equal to. So all of these are called inequalities. That means that the expressions on each side of these inequalities are not the same. Maybe I can make up a quick example of that. Something like x minus 5 is less than 20. Okay, well, over here I have 20. Well, with this less than symbol, I automatically know that x minus 5 has to be an amount less than 20. Okay, for that statement anyway to be true. 20 has to be a greater amount than whatever x minus 5 works out to. Okay, so that's the major difference between expressions and, equ and equations or expression and an inequality. Uh, keep on going here. Let me get to my next page, okay? Let's talk about what an open sentence is. An open sentence is an equation or an inequality that has a variable in it, okay? So to kind of simplify that down a little bit, let's just think about an equation like this is a simple one, 2 plus 5 equals 7. That's an equation, okay? It's not an open sentence, though. An open sentence is an equation with a variable in it, okay? Here would be an example of an open sentence, like 2x plus 6 equals 12. This is an open sentence. It's an equation that has an unknown amount of variable in it. An equation or an inequality that has a variable is called an open sentence, okay? Now, when you have an open sentence, a solution to the open sentence is when you substitute a number in for your variable in that equation or inequality, and it makes that statement a true statement. So when I'm looking here and I'm thinking, okay, I have an open sentence, 2x plus 6, okay, this is 12, I, I need this to be 12, what can I plug in here to make this 12? Well, if I, if I plug in a 3 here, if I replace x with 3 and using proper order of operations, 2 times 3 gives me 6, and 6 plus 6 is 12. The solution to this open sentence is 3. I need to plug in a 3 for x to make both sides of this equal to 12. Okay, so that's what a solution to an open sentence is. Here's another simple example. Um, 
x plus 5 equals 8. Well, if I replace x with 3, 3 plus 5 is indeed 8. That would be my solution to that open sentence. That's the major ideas of what the section's about. It's about taking what you learned in section 1-3, which is writing expressions, but we're just going to do it, we're going to write equations and inequalities, and then we're also going to be asked to find the solutions to these open sentences that we write, because the equations and inequalities we write are going to have variables in them, okay? Um, let me turn on to the next page. I think I have a few examples we can walk through. And, oh, one more thing before I go through a few examples. Something that I've seen each year some of my kids struggle with. There's a big difference between these phrases. When we say something like 8 less than x, and we learned this um, in 1-3, 8 less than x means we're taking some unknown amount and taking away 8 from it. And again, if you ever get stuck with that and you're like, well, how, how did you know to get it in that order? Well, I always pick a simple number, like let's say 10. 8 less than 10. Well, if you tell me 8 less than 10, I'm thinking, okay, what number is 8 smaller than 10? Well, the number that's 8 less than 10 would be 2. Well, how do I get that? Well, in my mind, if this is my little, if I'm thinking here in my mind, I'm thinking, let me see, 10 minus 8, that's getting me 2. So if I said 8 less than 10, that's 2. So i got to take whatever this amount is and subtract 8. Okay, well, 8 less than x means something completely different than the phrase 8 is less than x. 8 is less than x means we have two distinct um, expressions, and I'm trying to say that the number 8 is definitely less than whatever this number x is, and I'm writing that as an inequality. So there's two ways I could write it. I could write 8 less than x like we did here, or I guess I could switch around and put x is greater than 8. Either one says the same thing. Either one of these is telling me that x is a greater value than 8. Okay? Now, there are some minor exceptions to this, but when you see is less than, typically that's telling you we need an inequality. It's not a subtraction. Okay? And I just wanted to point that out because sometimes I've seen that messed up. A couple example problems we can look at. Let me uh, get my screen up here turn the page. I think I turn the page and I can start pulling this down. If you look at number 7 on page 24, this would be an example we can walk through real quick. It says the product of 9 and the quantity 5 more than a number t is less than 6. Okay, so when I read these, if you get confused, and I know these can be confusing sometimes, um, I try to break this down into parts. Let's start off with the product of 9 and well, when you say the product of 9 and, product means multiplying. I'm multiplying 9 with something, okay? So that would be the first thing. I'm going to multiply 9 with some number. So let me get to that here. I'll see if I can uncover this bit by bit. I don't know if I can. I'll pull it down here more in a minute. So I'm going to take 9 times something. Well, now it's 9 times, okay? So it says the product of 9 and the quantity 5 more than the number t. Well, how do I write 5 more than a number t? Well, that's an, uh, an addition. I'm adding 5 to t. So I'm taking 9 times this quantity 5 plus t, and I'm putting that in parentheses, 9 times this quantity is less than, now here comes that is less than, that's not subtraction, that's an inequality, is less than 6. Okay, so that would be an example of how to write number 7. Another one I believe I did up here is number 11, and I'm going to have to turn my layers on, and I, I will do that here. Maybe I can cover it up a little bit. Eh, I guess I can't turn that off. Maybe you already peeked and saw the answer. It says the difference of a number t and 7. Well, difference is subtracting. So a difference of t and 7. So I'm taking t minus 7, I have that, is greater than 10. So is greater than 10, so you can see that here is greater than 10, and less than 20. So this is one of those triple inequalities, so and less than 20. So 20, if, if it's less than 20, that means 20 is greater than that. So I have 20 greater than t minus 7 greater than 10. When you have triple inequalities, it's important to note 
the arrows in our triple inequality have to point in the same direction. I think a common mistake I see people make on this is, and I'm going to write this in red because this is, is definitely screwed up. I see people that will do t, oop, I wanted red, here we go, t minus 7 is greater than 10, but then they put down that uh, is less than 20 or something like that, okay? If you write that, that would be incorrect. I'd have to mark it incorrect because you never write a triple inequality with uh, your inequality symbol pointing in opposite directions. So I always think of this, if, if t minus 7 is greater than 10 but less than 20, if you put these in order, 20 has to be the biggest, t minus 7 is in the middle, and 10 is the smallest. There's my triple inequality. And then one more thing we'll have to do today, and you can use the calculator on this, is if you look at numbers uh, 17 to 28 in your book, I'm, I'm going to walk you through number 21. It says, check whether the given number is a solution of the equation or inequality. Well, that's pretty simple to do. Um, here's my equation they gave us, r divided by 3 minus 4 equals 4. And they're asking, and then they have a little colon in there, and then or semicolon, and then 12. Okay, so they're asking, is 12 a solution? Well, let's see. If we go ahead and we plug in 12 for r, and we take 12 divided by 3, remember proper order, we've got to divide before we subtract. 12 divided by 3 is 4. 4 minus 4, well, let me put a little question mark here. Is 4 minus 4 equal to 4? And I'm pretty sure you're thinking, uh, heck, no, it's not. It's equal to 0. Okay, well, that means 12 would not be a solution to this open sentence. Remember, that's one of the things we talked about in one of my previous slides. What is a solution? Okay, well, a solution means you can take a number, replace it in here, and it makes this true. 12 being replaced does not make this true. That is not a solution. Okay, so I think that will that will be a good start to getting you going on your homework tonight. Actually, one more. Oops. One more here I want to quickly walk through. If you look at 23, I see I have one more later. Might as, might as well do that with you. 15 minus 4y greater than 6. And I want to see is 2 a solution. Let me plug in 2. 4 times 2 is 8. 15 minus 8 is 7. Is 7 bigger than 6? Uh, yes, it is. 2 would be a solution to this open sentence. If I plug in 2, it will make the statement true. Now, you might be thinking, there are other things I could plug in here to make it true. I could have plugged in zero. That is correct. You could have. But in number 23, they only asked us, is two a solution? And yes, it is. Okay. So now, there you go. Now we've gotten enough for you to get this done.